I welcome you here to discuss the general characteristics and classification of bryophytes. Bryophyta is a group of simplest and primitive plants which neither flower nor produce seeds and reproduce through spores. These are embryo bearing land plants that are non vascular. They show tissue differentiation and enclosed reproductive structures. They are also called the amphibians of plant world due to their preference for moist habitat and dependence on water for fertilization despite being land plants. Bryophytes are generally small but form a significant component of vegetation in cooler and moist temperate regions of northern and southern hemisphere. Almost majority of bryophytes are moisture loving mostly terrestrial growing in shaded places, moist rocks, bases of trees and similar moist places. A few inhabit aquatic habitats for instance rickshia lutens. Several grow in bogs such as sophagnum. Others grow in exposed sites and can endure drought. For example, Polytrichum juniperinum. Bryophytes form an important part of vegetation in cold temperate regions of the world, including Himalayas. Different species of bryophytes are widely used as medicine, construction material, insect repellent, packing material and smoke filters. Some are also used in horticulture because of their high water holding capacity. Gardeners use moss wrapped boscats and pots for cultivating flowers. Some insects and birds use mosses for building shelter. Many bryophytes are first to colonize open and often nutrient poor sites where no other plant is capable to grow. For instance, they grow on bare rocks and on recently deposited volcanic ash. Thus, they act as pioneers of vegetation. So, they have a role in succession. Certain mosses have preference for special kind of substrate for their growth. Therefore, some of them may serve as indicators of mineral deposits, pH condition, of substrate and also of particular seed plant, community and pollution levels. Thus they are used as biological indicators of environmental conditions. The general characters of bryophytes. Bryophytes are generally small structured land plants possessing chlorophyll A, B, storage product as starch, cellulose in the cell walls and sometimes possess cuticle. These are mostly autotrophic. A few are saprophytes, for instance Cryptothallus mirabilis is a saprophyte which grows in swamps. The main plant body of bryophytes is gametophyte. It is more conspicuous, long-lived, independent, green and freely branched. On the other hand, the sporophyte is short lived and completely dependent on the gametophyte. Gametophyte and sporophyte, the two phases are present in the life cycle of bryophytes. Both of these phases are morphologically distant, that is, there is heteriomorphic life cycle. In liverworts, such as Rickshia and Marcantia, the gametophyte is prostrate and thalloid. But in mosses, the gametophytic plant body is erect and differentiated into sitium and lateral appendages. The true roots are absent in bryophytes and the function of anchorage and absorption is performed by filamentous structures known as rhizoids. Rhizoids may be unicellular and unbranched as in liverworts and hornworts or multicellular as in mosses. Rhizoids are not true roots, instead they are analogous to true roots. 
The plant body is composed of parenchymatic cells and lacks differentiation. There is no xylem and phloem, which is a characteristic of true vascular plants. The plant body of bryophytes is devoid of filaments as seen in many algae, but rather of true parenchyma derived by three dimensional growth, usually from apical meristem. Being embryophytes, they have multicellular superentia and gametangia. That is, reproductive cells are always surrounded by one or several layers of sterile jacket cells. Bryophytes, being non vascular plants, can never grow to larger their small and simple structure provides great selective advantage in certain habitats. The tiny parenchymatous bodies of mosses and liverworts permit them to thrive in micro habitats such as stone walls, fences and bare rocks. Micro habitats that have too little water or soil for larger more vascular plants. The bryophytes reproduce by vegetative, asexual and sexual methods. Vegetative multiplication in bryophytes takes place by fragmentation, adventitious branches, innovations and jimmy. Typical support formation in bryophytes is lacking, but they show the formation of gametophyte directly from the cells of sporophyte, other than spore a phenomenon known as aposopori. The mosses have great power of regeneration and the wounding of unspecialized cells of various spots of sporophyte induce the production of green filament. The later bears a new crop of leafy gametophores. The sexual reduction in bryophytes is of oogams type. Sex organs are multicellular and considerably more complicated than those of thallophytes. Male sex organs are known as anthridia. Anthridia are stalked, globose and somewhat elliptic. They have an outer sterile one cell thick jacket which surrounds a solid mass of fertile cells, the androcytes. The androcytes eventually metamorphosis into motile biflagellate anthryozoids. The female sex organs known as archegonium. It is the phloxic shaped structure having a basal swollen ventral and somewhat more cylinder and elongated upper part, the neck. Ventral and the neck are surrounded by a jacket of sterile cells. Four cover cells are located at the top of the neck. Each archegonium contains a single egg cell which is located in the venter. A short stalk attaches the archegonium to gametophyte. Water is necessary for fertilization. Shortly before egg cell is mature, the cover cells separate. At the same time, the cells of the center of the neck dissolve so that the open canal connects the venter with moisture outside the archegonium. Free swimming sperms move towards chemical substances formed by the archegonium. This responds to chemical stimuli known as chemotactic response. Several sperms may enter the archegonium, but only one fertilizes the egg to form a diploid zygote within the venter. The zygote does not have any resting period and it divides immediately after fertilization. The first division of zygote is always transverse and outer cell gives rise to embryo. Thus they show exoscopic mood of embryo development. The embryo develops within the venter of the archegonium and gives rise to sporophyte or sporogonium. The sporophyte is simple structure without rhizoids, situm or leaves. It is completely dependent on gametophyte. 
The sporophyte is projecting structure, differentiating into foot, seta, and capsule. The classification of bryophytes. The term bryophyte was first time used by Robert Wren in 1864, who included algae, fungi, lichens, and mosses in this group. In later system of classification, however, algae, fungi, and lichens were placed in the separate division Thallophyta and liverworts and mosses together in Bryophytus. Echler, way back in 1813, has recognized two classes in division Bryophyta, Hepatici, that is liverworts, and Musi, that is mosses. Takhta John, in 1953, recognized three classes in Bryophytus, Hepatici, Anthocerote, and Musi. Hepatici for liverworts, Anthocerote for hornworts, and Musi for mosses. Roth Miller in 1957 changed the nomenclature of the classes, of the three classes of bryophytes as Hepaticopsida for Hepatici, Anthocerotopsida for Anthocerote, and Bryopsida for Musi. At present, majority of the workers recognize three divisions for these plants previously grouped together as bryophytes under the kingdom planti these include division hepatophyta for liverworts division anthocerotophyta for hornworts and division bryophyta for mosses now the diagnostic features of these three groups of bryophytes First of all, we will start with hepatophyta, or I may say liverworts. The name hepatophyta has been derived from Latin word hepato, which means liver. Hence, members of this class are commonly known as liverworts. The name liverwort is very old, having been used in the 9th century. It was probably applied to these plants because of their resemblance to liver and the belief that plant resembling human organs would cure diseases of organ they resemble. The diagnostic features of hepatophyta include the gametophyte which forms the main plant body is independent, dorsoventral, thalloid or folios. In thalloid forms, the plant body is prostrate, lobed and dichotomously branched. The ventral surface of thallus bears many unicellular, unbranched, smooth-walled, and tuberculate rhizoids. There are also scales. These scales are meant for retention of water. In folios forms, central axis bears leaves. In two or three rows, leaves are without midrib. Anatomically, thallus of liverworts is either simple or complex and is devoid of mechanical tissue. Photosynthetic cells contain numerous chloroplasts without pyrenoids. Vegetative multiplication in liverworts takes place by death and decay of older parts of the thallus and adventitious branches, jimmy or tubers. The members of hepatophyta are homothallic, monoecious, for example, rickshia, or heteriothallic, dioecious, for example, mercantia. The sex organs occupy dorsal or terminal position on the thallus. They develop from single superficial in shell. Sporophyte is simple, represented by capsule only as in rickshia, or it is differentiated into foot, seta, and capsule, as in mercantia. The suprogeny cells, called as archisporium, develop from the endothelium. The suprogenous tissue either forms only one spore mother cell, as in rickshia, or becomes differentiated 
into fertile spore mother cells and sterile elaters as in mercantia the capsule does not have sterile columella the only sterile cells are elaters the spores give rise to gametophyte on germination now the second group of bryophytes anthocerotophyta or hornworts it is a small group of bryophytes widely distributed in both temperate and tropical regions of world the diagnostic features of anthocerotophyta are as gametophyte is flat dorso ventral lobed and thalloid the thallus is attached to the substratum with the help of smooth wall rhizoids tuberculate rhizoids and scales are absent air spaces or air pores or air chambers are absent but intracellular mucilage cavities are present which open on ventral surface by slit like pores sex organs are limited in thallus anthidia develop on the dorsal surface from hypodermal cells they occur singly or in groups in the anthidial chambers archegonia develop from dorsal epidermal cells the sporophyte is differentiated into long cylindrical capsule small meristematic seta and a bulbous foot the capsule wall is 4 to 6 layer and the epidermis has stomata elaters do not have thickening bands and are called pseudo elaters now the last group bryophyta or more commonly mosses the mosses are the largest group of bryophytes which occur in almost all parts of the world they are abundant at altitudes ranging from 1200 to 2500 meters and some species occur up to 6500 meters the characteristic feature of the mosses that differentiate them from other bryophytes are the vegetative feature of the gametophyte early development and structure of mature sex organs and of sporophyte these features are explained here number 1 the gametophyte has two growth phases or stages number 1 protonema stage it is the juvenile stage young stage represented by prostrate creeping green and branched filamentous structure it develops from spore and only at transitory stage in the stage of bryophytic life cycle is represented by protonemal stage second the leafy stage or gametophores an erect cylindrical shoot with persistent leaves and sex organs the main axis of gametophore may be branched or unbranched the branches always arise below the leaves that is branching is extraaxillary branching is extraaxillary leaves are simple minute sessile and usually with a distant midrib they are only one cell in thickness rhizoids are multicellular branched and have oblique septa the axis is differentiated into central conducting tissue and a peripheral cortex vegetative multiplication takes place by fragmentation stolons branching of protonema special leafy shoots jimmy and persistent apses the sex organs are born in groups at the apses of branches the plants are dioecious or monoecious the anthidia are club shaped narrow and elongated the anthidian jacket is single layered male gametes are biphyllate and spirally coiled the archegonium are stalked with a much elongated neck and massive venter the sporophyte of mosses is usually differentiated into foot seta and capsule the elongated seta 
arises, raises the capsule much above the gametophyte to facilitate dispersal of spores. The capsule usually has a peristome which helps in dispersal of spores. On germination, the spores first form protonema which in turn develop into leafy gametophores. With this, we completed our today's topic, that is general characters and classification of bryophytes. I hope you might have understood me. And with this, I conclude my today's topic.